Okay, this is uh, Matt. Uh, 367 lecture 17, online lecture 17. We set up time. Okay. Remember, we defined what's uh, what a UFT is. Remember, uh, UFT UFT uh, is an integral domain R. domain R such that uh, it satisfies two things. Every non-zero, every, every non-zero non-unit uh, element is a product of product of irreducible elements. And also, every irreducible element is prime. So we have done these before. Uh, is an example. And also, uh, we prove this proposition. If uh, an integral domain is PID, then it is UFD. And also, before we should prove that if we have an Euclidean domain, then it is PID, so that uh, it's also UFD. And the basic example is the integers. And integers in the integers, uh, if R is in the integers, the, then irreducible elements are prime. Irreducible elements, which is the same as prime elements. Uh, they are uh, plus minus p is where p is a prime number. Prime number in the sense that we know before. Okay. So in z plus or for, for example, if we take minus six, minus six is can be written as minus three times two, or two three times minus two, uh, so that it's a product of two other non-unit elements so that minus six is not uh, irreducible, is, is reducible, is reducible. And we know that it's, an, it's not a prime number. Since six is, a, six, six is not a prime number. Okay, minus six is not irreducible. Now, we proved uh, PIDs are UFT. Next thing we will prove is that uh, in a UFT, you can write, so remember, uh, let's see an example. If you have a number integer n greater than or equal to two, then you can write n as a product of uh, prime numbers. PIs are prime numbers in the sense we know, prime numbers. And it follows that if n is integer, n is not zero, uh, and n is not plus or minus one, so the plus or minus ones are unit, so that, uh, remember, if n is positive, we can write as a product of, uh, prime elements, if, if is, uh, n is negative, so we need, may need to add plus or minus one. 
plus or minus one times this product. So if you like, this is plus or minus times P1, P2, etc. So that every element is can be written as a product of irreducible elements in a essentially in a unique way. So uh, so for example, minus six you can write is as minus three times two or also three times minus two. Three times minus two. times minus two. Of course, change, but we are not counting the change, uh, the orders. Orders are not important. And two and minus two are associated to each other. And three and minus three are associated to each other. Uh, that's, we will prove this uh, uh, more general statement for any, uh, in a UFT. So the theorem is, The unique factorization, that's where the name comes from, unique factorization. So the name is unique factorization domain, but we haven't said why uh, there is no uniqueness yet. So this, this is the uniqueness. So let R be a UFT unique factorization domain in the sense that we define the bow and uh, uh, A is a non-zero number, which is not unit, uh, not unit. Then, then we may write, then one may write. A uh, is a product of P1, P2, PKs, where uh, P1, P2s, PKs are prime numbers, are, uh, are primes or irreducible primes and this representation, the representation of uh, the representation of A as a product of as a product of primes is unique. So I said prime numbers, but uh, since prime numbers are irreducible, so you could write also irreducible numbers. Uh, this is uh, unique in the sense that, uh, next page, in the, so what did I write here? In the sense that, uh, if A is equal to Q1, Q2, Qm, uh, where Qi's are prime. So if there, if this is another, uh, another, um, another factorization, then uh, first of all, M is equal to K and and uh, each PI is associated to QI for all one is less than, less than I is less than, two, I is from one to K uh, by the labeling if necessary, of course. So the order might be different. So by changing the order of QIs, so P1 is associated, associated to QI, P1 is associated to Q1, P2 is associated to Q2, etc. So associate means, remember, PI is associated to QI means, uh, PI is equal to some unit times QI. U is unit. So original definition is, um, 
pi divides qi and qi divides pi. It's the same thing. And there's a proof of the theorem. Uh, So, uh, did we in the me six? So, in the in the I guess in the previous uh, yeah in the previous lecture. We proved that uh, we proved that uh, every element A can be written as a product of as a product of can be written as uh, a product of irreducible elements. And irreducible elements are prime. Therefore, A is a product of prime elements. Okay. Every element is a product of irreducible elements by the definition of not not proved by the by the uh, this is not true uh, we not be, be proved this is uh, since u is uh, since r is uft let me change it like this since uh, r is uft. A can be written as a product of irreducible elements, and irreducible elements are prime. So therefore, A can be written as a product of prime elements. Okay, that's the correct, correct way. Okay, now uh, it remains to prove uniqueness. Uniqueness. Uh, so induction on N. Induction on K. So K is, remember, we wrote A as, uh, A as, uh, we wrote A as a product of prime elements and induction on this K. So if K is equal to one, then A is irreducible. Reducible. And so A is P1. And also, if, if you write another way, Q1 times QM, then since A is irreducible, this M must be 1. M must be 1. So that. Uh, PI, P1 is equal to Q1. Okay, that's unique. Now assume that that the statement is true, that the uniqueness is true. Hold, holds for 
uh, product of k minus one primes. So now let's prove for k. And if a is p1, p2, pk, and also q1, q2, qm, then p1 divides, divides q1, q2, qm. So since p is prime, p1 is prime, since p1 is prime, p1 divides one of them. p1 divides qi for some i, for some i, we can assume assume that i is equal to one. Now, now p1 divides q1 so that q1 is equal to u times p1. And since q is irreducible also, so q1 is irreducible, also, and P1 is not unit, P1 is not unit, uh, so therefore U is unit. So U is unit, uh, right? So Q1 is irreducible, uh, P1, this P1 is not unit. So if, when you have an irreducible element, when you write as a product of two other elements, then one of them must be unit. So P1 is not unit by assumption. So the U is unit. So this implies that uh, P1 is associated to Q1. Okay. P1 is associated to Q1. Next, so that uh, P1, P2, PK is equal to Q1. Q1 is U times P1, sorry. Uh, U times P1, this is Q1. Q2, Q3, QM, etc. So, and if you cancel P1s from both sides, P2, P3, PK is equal to uh, U times Q2, Q3, QM. And on the left hand side, there are K minus one, uh, uh, K minus one primes. And since Q1 is, Q2 is prime and U is unit, this is also prime. So by induction hypothesis, By induction hypothesis, uh, k minus one is equal to m minus one. M minus one, there are m minus one elements on the right, left hand side, right hand side, so that uh, so that k is equal to m. And uh, also by relabeling, by assumption, by the assumption, uh, by the uh, assumption, by relabeling, relabel. In QIs, PI is associated to QI, uh, and the P2 is associated to is associated to uh, U times Q2 uh, associated, and this implies that P2 is also associated to Q2. Of course, uh, this is I is greater than three, so therefore. Uh, uh, uniqueness is proved. So P1 is associated to Q1, i.e. we have P1 is associated to Q1, P2 is associated to U times Q2, Q2, and PK is associated to QK from here, and M is equal to K. So that's the end of the proof. Okay, next. 
So here is a corollary. So if R is UFT, if R is a unique factorization domain, uh, and and A is not zero, is uh, is not is a non-unit. Another unit, then there is a unique, then there exists unique positive integers. Integers n1, uh, n, sorry, e1, e n, such that, n primes, such that. Uh, a is equal to p1 to the e1, p2 to the e2, and pn to the en. And, uh, and also, if uh, i is not equal to j, pi is not associated to qi. Okay. This is uh, for the proof follows from the above theorem. S simply write a as the product of uh, prime elements, and then the, uh, if, for example, p1 and p5 are associated to each other and bring them together, so that this is uh, so all of them. So that way you get p1 squared, p1 cube, etc. So that's uh, it follows from the above theorem. Anyway, uh, next. Okay, so proposition. Uh, in the So remember, so before the proposition, let me remind you that in an integral domain, suppose R is an integral domain, integral domain, and A and B are integers, usually not zero, let's, let's take not to be not zero. And we say that D is, the greatest common divisor of A and B if uh, if D divides A, D divides B, and second, if you have another number, uh, if you have another uh, elements C in R dividing both A and B, then C should divide D. And we also proved about that uh, before, that uh, if R is R is a PID, then uh, uh, this D is unique, exists and unique up to associate. Okay, this was proved before. Now we will prove this for the higher, bigger class. Namely, so if PID is, is a set like this, uh, and UFD is a bigger set, so, so every PID is a UFD, it's a subset. There's also the Euclidean domain is a smaller set inside PID. Uh, so we will prove for every element of, uh, in UFT, every element is uh, grid scum divisor exists and unique up to associate. Okay, let's see. So here's a proposition. Proposition. If R is UFT, if R is a UFT, unique factorization domain, and if A, 
P R in R are not both zero. So one of them at least non zero. Then A and B uh, have a greatest common divisor. Greatest common divisor D, which is unique up to associate. Associates. So here's the proof. Proof if A is zero, if A is zero, then B is not zero, of course one of them is not zero, then the greatest common divisor of A and B is B. So B divides A, B divides zero, B divides B, so, and that's the greatest common divisor. You can check it. And if you use unit, if A is a unit in R, then uh, then greatest common divisor of a and B is one. Why is that? Uh, the reason is that if A is unit, A is one times A, B is one times B, so that one divides A, one divides B, and suppose C divides A and C divides B, that uh, then C is equal to, so A is equal to C times X, B is equal to C times Y, uh, so that uh, from here we, get, we, we may write one is equal to C times X times A inverse, uh, so that C is a unit, so that C divides uh, A, C divides one, sorry. C divides, C is a unit, so that C divides one, uh, so that one is the greatest common divisor of or A and B, so that these two things are satisfied. And whenever C divides A and B, then C divides one, so that one is the greatest common divisor by the definition. Now, let me go to the other page. Uh, assume that, assume now that A is not zero and B is not zero, and they are not unit also. Uh, so in this case, so since, so by the above theorem, well, about corollary, we can write, we may write, A is equal to P1 times E1, P2 times E2, PK times EK, and also B is equal to some U times P1 to the F1, P to the F2, P, uh, K to the FK. So if, it, if, if, for example, if P1 is in A and it's not in U, then the, uh, is, is, if it's not in B, then you, you take A1 to be zero. Where, uh, where P1, PKs are prime, prime, distinct primes, Distinct primes and EIs are integers, positive, uh, are integers, and FIs are integers, and U is a unit in R. So if you say, let so look at E1 times F1, EI times EI and FI. Let's look at grids come to us. Uh, so let's uh, let GI to be the minimum of E1, EI, FI. Uh, for I is one, two, K. 
uh, well, some of them might be zero, then uh, then look at let D is let D is P one times G one P K times G K. So since G1 is less than or equal to P1, G2 is less than or equal to P2, uh, E2, and GK is less than or equal to EK, and also for F, F, then D divides A, and D also divides B, clearly. And, uh, and also, so the first condition is satisfied. Also, also if C divides A and C divides B, so remember, uh, A is in the previous slide, previous page, uh, E1, PK, uh, PN, EN, N, or K. Did we say, what did we say in the previous page? Uh, K, sorry. P1, PK, EK. And B is, let me write here, Q1. So P1, sorry, so mu times P1, F1, PK, FK. Uh, so if C divides A and C divides B, then uh, then you can the C can be written as some unit, V times P1 to the K1, H1, sorry, let me write H1, uh, and P k to hk, where hi is less than or equal to uh, gi. Oh, hi is less than or equal to ai and bi, so that's less than or equal to gi. So therefore, uh, c divides d. So that means d is the greatest common divisor of a and b. Just like as in integers. And uh, uniqueness is as before. as before, so let D1, D2, B2, greatest common divisors. So D1 is the is a greatest common divisor, greatest, uh, D1 is greatest common divisor, and D2 divides uh, A and D2 divides B, so this implies that D2 divides A, D1, sorry, and conversely, D2 is the greatest common divisor, D1 divides A, D2 divides A, so that means, uh, sorry, D1, this is D1, so that means D1 divides D2, so therefore, D1 is associated to D2, D2, so therefore, i.e. greatest common divisor of A and B exist and unique up to associate. So let me finish this video here.